I'm sure all of you have seen or at least heard of fidget spinners, these little uh, tension reducing devices that people are using. I bought one a couple of weeks ago just to experiment and see what it was all about. Uh, after you've spun it half a dozen times and timed it to see how long you can get it to spin, it gets a little boring. So I started to think of other things you could do with this. And it brought me back to a time when I used to be a, a science teacher. And I can remember working with the kids and showing them how uh, a brushed DC motor would work. And this kind of reminded me of the armature. Now the difference, of course, uh, what you would need is to wrap coils around each of these lobes. You'd need a commutator and a few other things. But this one made me think, well, maybe I could turn it into a brushless DC motor. It'd be a nice demonstration of how that works. So what I did, first of all, was to make a base, uh, just a piece of plywood uh, with a 5 16 hole in the middle. 5 16 carriage bolt fits the spinner rather nicely. And I countersunk that so that it would uh, not stick beyond the board. Put a couple of nuts on there, and the really nice thing is I can put that down there. I can wind another nut in on top of it, lock it down so that it's very secure, and I can easily come up with a couple of uh, different ways of wiring this or connecting it with uh, magnets and electromagnets to turn it into a motor. Speaking of magnets, very conveniently, the outer parts of the, uh, the fidget spinner have bearings on them. And those bearings are steel, so they will accept magnets. And I've got some rare earth magnets here that I had in a junk box. And I'm going to put a couple of them on each of the arms sticking out. Now I've got the fidget spinner with magnets on it. All I need to turn that into a motor is a coil. Now, you can make a coil just by taking insulated wire and wrapping it around a bolt. I decided to uh, wrap wire, magnet wire, around uh, the bobbin from a sewing machine. You can get these, I guess, at any sewing store, probably on eBay also. Uh, wrapped up a coil, put it onto an acrylic arm, and conveniently that arm fits over that same 5 16 bolt, and you want to adjust that so that it just misses the magnets so that they can spin by. The other thing that you need then in order to have a brushless motor is some way to turn this electromagnet on and off at just the right point to pull these magnets along and then release the, that uh, magnetic field when they go by. So what we need is an electromagnet of some sort, whether it's one you wind like this or wind on a bobbin, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. A base, a stand, some magnets, and the fidget spinner and some sort of a switch to get this thing to turn on and off at just the right point to get it to wind. Now I've got a couple of uh, demonstration motors back here. We'll just give you a preview of what these things can do. See if I can get them spinning a little bit. This one's going the wrong way. And that's where we're headed. We'd like to build up a couple of demonstration motors using a couple of different methods that demonstrate how a uh, brushless DC motor works. Okay, I'm going to wind a spool of magnet wire onto one of these uh, uh, spools you use for a uh, sewing machine. I just have a hobby motor here with a shaft on it that just perfectly fits one of these little bobbins. And I'm going to take the, uh, this is number 28 AWG um, magnet wire and I'm going to bring a uh, an end of it through one of the holes in the bobbin and I'm going to run that around a few times just to get it out of the way doesn't need to be very long, a couple of inches is fine and I have this hobby motor connected to a uh, a variable power supply, I'm going to put out about oh, a volt and a half to two volts I've got a popsicle stick through the spool here so that when that starts spinning it's going to pull the wire and I can adjust the speed just by holding back on it. It's not all that strong. I'm going to do a couple of turns here by hand. There we go. And turn the power on. And it's pulling and hopefully you can see it's winding on real nicely. I'm trying to go back and forth evenly although it's not going to be perfect not as good as if it were machine uh, spun 
One of the important things to keep in mind when you get towards the end, uh, keep tension on this because even when you go to turn it off, uh, if you release the tension, it'll go sprawling and you'll have a, uh, a loose coil instead of a tight one. And we're getting pretty close to the end. I really have no idea how many turns this is, but for our purposes, I'm sure it's going to be more than adequate. We'll put a bolt uh, through the center. Almost done. We'll do the last few turns here. My hand close to it. All right, I'm going to stop right there. As I said, keep tension on it. Turn the power supply off. And at this point, I want to, again, keep the tension there. Take a little piece of electrical tape that I really should have had ready, but I didn't, and put the electrical tape over that to keep it from coming loose. Cut that off and we've got a pretty good coil. All I have to do is take the bare ends, uh, clean off the little bit of uh, enamel that's on the very end, and we've got a magnet coil. Just pull that off. There we go, the two ends, and we're in business. About the simplest motor setup you can have is, uh, is shown here. We've got the, the coil that we, uh, we rolled or we spun um, a little while ago, it terminates in a two-pin uh, connection. I've got the uh, the fidget spinner down here bolted to this upright bolt and I put three little magnets on the outer part of each lobe and adjusted things with some washers so that the magnets don't quite touch the bottom of the electromagnet. What I'm going to do is connect, uh, I've got seven volts DC that I'm going to connect to the coil of course, I can just tap the coil. Notice if I just do that, it spins kind of randomly, depending upon where the magnets are and where you happen to hit it. But you need something to time it properly. What I have here is a little micro switch. When the lobe hits the, the paddle, the arm on the micro switch, it's going to turn that electromagnet on just for a brief period of time. So we're going to take our 7 volts DC, put one connection into the electromagnet, put one connection from the electromagnet into the on-off switch and then we're going to do a jumper between the outer two pins so that it makes a circuit. Now, if I press this button, notice that that turns, I can make that wiggle. The real trick is to find the right place to put this. Oh, there we go. The arms on the, uh, the fidget spinner are hitting that switch over and over and over very rapidly and turning the magnet on just at the right time. Now you'll notice if I slide this down a little bit, it's not the best place. It's slowing down because it's turning the electromagnet on at the wrong point. But if I go back to where I had it, which is about here, let's see if we can get her going again. There it goes. So the position of this has to do with the timing of when the magnet comes on, the electromagnet comes on, and when the arm happens to be nearby. But uh, as you can see, this basic one works pretty well. It's not as fast as it could be because the, the switch itself is creating a lot of friction. You can hear the noise as it's going by, but it does work. With the, uh, the mechanical switch that we, we were using, the big problem that we ran into was friction. Uh, every time the switch was hit by the arm on the, uh, the fidget spinner, it slowed it down a little bit. So let's go to a non-contact switch. This is something called a reed switch. It has two little magnetic reeds inside that are normally opposing one another. They won't come together. Uh, when a magnetic field comes by this, they will go together and turn the switch on for a brief period of time. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to uh, connect our source of 7 volts DC and different voltages will work by the way you can run anything probably from 3 or 4 volts up to 10 or 12 maybe even more and we'll do a jumper uh, between the coil and the reed switch and another jumper between the other terminal of the battery or the power supply and the reed switch 
and when I connect this up nothing much should happen because it should be off but when I bring it by a magnet you'll notice that it reacts let's get it spinning and see if we can find a position doesn't seem to like that but let's see if it'll go in the other direction yeah we're not having too much luck let's try a little bit different spot a little different spot sometimes you have to fish there we go you have to fish a little bit to find the right position in the right direction. There we go. And as you can see, that's spinning very rapidly with virtually no noise other than the uh, the bearings or the bearing making a bit of noise. And if I move this off to the left Whoop, I just lost one of my connections. Notice it continues to spin for quite a while just because of inertia. All right, let's get that back over here, fire it up again. I've got to get just in the right position by the, uh, the magnet. Boy, that's really moving. I'm about 90 degrees. We've got the, the arm with the coil over here, and I'm about 90 degrees from it. And that's going in a... Uh, which direction? Counterclockwise? Let me stop it for a second. It's going in a clockwise direction. There it goes again. Alright, so a reed switch. One of the things that really should be done with this reed switch, reed switch you should put a diode across it because every time this coil uh, is turned off, there's something called back EMF. There's a back pulse of power. And if you don't put a diode across there, eventually those contacts are going to fuse because they're going to arc just a little bit. As a matter of fact, if we tried this with the lights out, we'd probably see a little bit of arcing going on right now, even with only uh, 7 volts at a couple hundred milliamps. You see we're humming along rather nicely here. This is a, uh, a slightly modified, uh, I guess I could say improved, uh, version of the reed switch um, spinner. And one of the things I want you to notice, if I if I reverse the voltage, there I switch the uh, power supply um, so that it's uh, traveling in the other direction. The motor will come to a stop, and with a little bit of luck, it'll start up in the other direction. Now, if you do put the diode across the uh, uh, the reed switch, that's not going to work because the diode will only allow electricity to travel in one direction. I'd like to stop this so I can show you how this is built. It's the exact same thing uh, that we used a few minutes ago with the, uh, the handheld reed switch, except what I've done is I have mounted the reed switch on another piece of, uh, this happens to be acrylic, and if I take it apart, you see we have, first of all, the, uh, the magnet. And the second arm is the reed switch. It goes across here, and it has a connector. So the stacking goes like this, and, and the reed switch and the coil are at about a 90 degree angle. Now that we have a pretty good idea of how nicely we can get this thing spinning uh, using either a mechanical switch or a reed switch, what I'd like to do in the next video is show you how we can use an optical sensor and a different type of magnetic sensor uh, to get it going even faster and more reliably. We'll also take a look at a rather simple way to figure out just how fast this thing is spinning because, of course, that's a question that always comes to mind. And it's also good for testing because if you make a change, you want to know precisely whether that change made it go faster or slower. Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell uh, just looking at it. So we'll be back with a new video uh, in a short period of time, and we'll take a look at those options.